WA sand plain soils feature multiple constraints, including water repellents, acidity and compaction, all focus points of GRDC's $33 million investment in the Soils Constraints West project. After five dedicated years, the project's drawing to a close, with key outcomes emerging for growers. At Gemelling, where the deep yellow sands are water repellent, the project has compared strategic deep tillage options to ameliorate these types of soils. So this is a mobile plough treatment. You can see here where the topsoil's been turned in and a, a small layer of subsoil's been brought up on top. Knowing your constraints is the first step. Really understand um, your soils beforehand, so do a lot of soil testing, understand the constraints and the fertility of the soil and what the soil profile is actually like to try and almost understand the water holding capacity of that soil. The project is developing sustainable soil management practices. Most of the research has been done in the West, but the findings are also relevant to Australia's southern cropping region. The interactions look very similar in the first year, significantly improved biomass, um, and significantly improved tiller counts. On this site, Steve Davies has worked closely with agronomist Tim Boys to determine deep tillage soil options to tackle water repellents. So we've got um, deep ripping, which is really about loosening the soil and breaking up the compaction, but it doesn't really greatly change um, the nature of the topsoil. Then we've got um, tools which are really looking at deep soil mixing, so they're actually um, more thoroughly mixing that um, soil down to 40 centimetres. And then we've got um, some ploughing options which allow us to invert the soil and that actually really buries the topsoil and brings up a layer of subsoil. What we end up finding is that we've got a fair few roots growing through here and then we can as we go down just start to see some roots growing deeper into that profile. Soil constraints result in lost grain production worth more than four billion dollars annually just in WA. A key project outcome is that growers should consider treating multiple constraints over smaller areas, rather than working on one constraint at a time. Techniques that work on multiple constraints can lead to greater benefits overall. We've got an untreated control plot here and then a mobile plough plot here. And really the obvious differences are this has got a lot of small heads in it and um, really with the water repellents a lot of these plants have come up late and are small and it's got a lot of weeds in between the crop rows. If we look here at the mobile plough one we've got these bigger heads, obviously healthier plants and in between the crop rows it's really clean, there's no weeds. The project has extended its work beyond the field with a team of PhD students, Australia's next generation of researchers who are providing innovative project information. They're really doing some basic fundamental research on understanding soil water repellents and the molecular interactions, which will potentially give us a better insight into how to manage the problem, and also looking at how soil water repellents interact with crop nutrition. In areas of quite high water repellents, soil inversion techniques or deeper mixing potentially can change the soil surface and reduce repellents. What we're finding with the soil amelioration treatments is that with deep ripping we're removing that deeper compaction and that's giving us better access to subsoil moisture on these deep sands. But there are other options that growers, um, if they don't quite ready to go down that step, they can use things like soil wetting agents and even on-row sowing is proving to actually be quite a, an effective and consistent way of managing the problem. Steve says whatever options growers choose, there's a formula to follow. Firstly, to really understand the soils um, that they're actually going to ameliorate. Um, secondly, they really need to um, actually work on the paddock after they've done the amelioration effort and actually sort of prepare the paddock and get it ready for seeding. Um, thirdly, they actually need to um, sort of, you know, ideally have a controlled traffic farming system in place so they're not actually um, recreating that compaction um, that they've actually just got rid of as part of the soil amelioration practices and they need to have a strategy for how they're going to seed these um, ameliorated soils because the soil is very soft. The project has developed resources to help growers understand where amelioration strategies fit, including how to choose the most cost-effective practices. We've got the tool ranking options for soil amelioration, which is um, a financial comparison tool. Um, there's also the CTF calculator for looking at the benefits of CTF in systems 
and also some e-books that are being produced and, and currently in production as well that are looking at you know providing some of the detailed information behind um, these constraints and how to manage them. The cost to determine and apply the options is around $41 a hectare, but there are tangible returns for the time, the effort and the outlay. What we're finding with these options is that generally they're really profitable and that we find that within the first year or two, um, you actually pay for the cost of doing the treatment and then um, you basically it's profitable from then on.